so i would now like to request sukanya to continue with the further proceedings thank you aniket it gives me immense pleasure to introduce our next speaker dr samraj dabey dinagar sir are you present hello sir yeah go yes. ahead so sorry for keeping you waiting not a problem thank you sir thank you sir dr dhinagar is the incumbent senior vice president at the tvs motor company he has been a senior manager at tata motors before becoming a lead engineer at general electric having contributed to several aspirational automobile giants he indeed the source of inspiration to many he has a rich and varied industrial experience of over 24 years spanning small engine design and development engine development engine calibration engine durability development r and d facilities development of new control algorithms and embedded systems he has got 130 patents both in india and the united states and a total of 30 international and national publications He has also been a PhD fellow of mechanical engineering from IIT Madras after attending Anna University. His career from being a meritorious research student to an eminent corporate officer, he has probably seen it all. Today, he has graced us with his presence and we look forward to getting a glimpse of his experience as he shares valuable knowledge with us. Now, I would like to request Dr. Dhinagar to present the stage with his ever influencing words so please hi uh, thanks a lot for the intro and uh, thanks for uh, uh, giving me an opportunity to speak today yeah so i enjoy speaking to youngsters so that that's the reason i agreed uh, uh, to speak to you and as you are in the second and third year of your uh, engineering uh, courses uh, predominantly mechanical is what i told there may be others Uh, but uh, so let me start off uh, this industry is uh, going in a very rapid pace uh, growing changing itself and uh, by the time you reach uh, uh, the uh, points of uh, employment into the industry the industry will change much further uh, the industry what it used to be a, a simple mechanical engineering industry uh, dominated by engine driven technologies Uh, will not be so in the next uh, four years. So, I am going to deviate from this hybrid and uh, hybrid is in the industry per se uh, is not a key technology to pursue today. Uh, they are if you are ten years uh, older than what you are today, if you have finished your engineering ten years back and looking for a, an opportunity, hybrid would have been a technology to pursue because uh, they were the technology uh, either on the design side or on the uh vehicle side or on the software side or on the manufacturing side uh, everybody was working on hybrid about 10 years back prius is much much older technology uh, with the metal hydride batteries and uh, so today's technology what every company pursues and uh, is in the electric and if you happen to be a mechanical engineer basically uh, you are not uh, greatly wanted in uh, auto industry Uh, everybody wants a software engineer everybody wants a modeling engineer everybody wants a electrical electronic engineer everybody wants a ai engineer and not a pure mechanical engineer designing shafts and bearings and uh, couplings and uh, gears and uh, uh, differentials and bearings and life calculations they are all interesting which you are going to study for next two more years and do projects uh, but uh, will that get you a great uh, opportunity in the automotive industry uh, may not be Uh, so you need to look at uh, keep this in mind when you look at your career look at your projects look at your internships uh, yeah, the industry is going to quickly move into software on wheels or a computer on wheels uh, it's no longer uh, entirely an engine beautifully made with 1500 1800 parts of very fine mechanical engineering uh, rocker to crankshaft to bearing to uh, to whatever valves to and then cooling system pumps seals Uh, you name it every fine piece of mechanical engineering there's an injector injecting fuel at so many thousand times there's a solenoid there's an armature there's a fine combination of engineering 
uh, built into these uh, vehicles, uh, whether two wheeler, three wheeler, four wheeler, what, buses, trucks, everything was very similar in different sizes. Uh, when I work on um, uh, 6000 HP engine at uh, GE uh, for their locomotives, I can hang on the fuel injection pipe and uh, do some pull ups. The pipe size, uh, the size is about one and a half inches, uh, which carries the high pressure fuel at uh, 2000. Uh, bar pressure or 2000 kg per centimeter square pressure into the engine. You can feel the uh, fuel pulse moving through your hand, one hand to the other hand when you hold uh, with both hands. Uh, that's the size of fuel injection. Uh, compared to what we have uh, today's common rail engines uh, running in uh, uh, small cars in India, Hyundai or Maruti cars, uh, they have pipe, pipe sizes about uh, uh, four or five millimeters with a fuel passage of about uh, uh, half a millimeter to one millimeter sizes. Uh, so they are the same. Uh, one carries uh, tons of fuel because it produces 6,000 hours per hour. One produces only about 50, 60, 80, 100 hours per hour. Uh, but the technology is uh, scalable. So they are all the finer pieces of mechanical engineering. What you should have pursued maybe if you're born uh, like me about 20, 25 years before uh, this date where you are born. And today technology is changing. So I'm going to focus on electric hybrid is uh, come and it is there today's industry, it will go. Every government is trying to shut down the uh, hybrid and engines. India, it is uh, you are punished if you produce hybrid vehicles and uh, uh, normal petrol driven vehicles are uh, taxed at a GST of 28%. If you produce an electric, government welcomes, so you get a GST of 5%, the lowest in the country. Uh, so you, you save a tax of almost 23%. Now you had dare to produce this so-called hybrid vehicles, what you is your title of today's discussion, you will be penalized by a 43% GST, right? Uh, so this is done to avoid uh, industry going into this hybrid and hiding behind uh, some simple technology of adding a motor and a battery and small controllers and say I have reduced 20% CO2 and so I should get some support. Uh, this has been uh, Toyota's uh, pursuit. Uh, in US very successful when petrol consumption was a struggle for the industry. You can't reduce petrol consumption unless you recover some energy store in some place, supply it back to the wheels at the appropriate time in efficient times. So the hybrid was a great technology, but it is passing its uh, time. And uh, the technology what everybody pursues is electric. And you would have seen Ola's announcement in the two wheeler space. And uh, they've already got uh, close to 200,000 bookings is what they claim and a uh, very nice vehicle, very cute vehicle. You can talk to the vehicle, the vehicle can talk to you back and the vehicle might walk behind you in future, uh, possibly when you walk in a uh, parking lot. Uh, so the cars do that today. There are cars which can, you need not get into the car. Even in Indian roads, you can stay outside and uh, request the car to come out of the parking lot. It will come out. Uh, you need not go into the gap between two cars to open the door. Uh, so they are all the software on wheels. It's, it's no longer a car or a two-wheeler or a, a track, uh, which is going to uh, be limited to mechanical engineering uh, per se, uh, because without mechanical engineering, there is no automobile. Uh, but uh, the core of technology is the uh, Ola Scooter S1 Pro talking back to the user, welcoming the user, so showing the map what he selected in his cell phone, and diagnosing itself uh, and telling the user what is the uh, distance uh, destination he has selected the vehicle is going to reach or not, uh, whether he has enough charge or not, whether somebody asked in the previous session about fast charging, whether the fast charger location, how to go there, uh, whether you can get a charge for the destination, half charge, full charge, 18 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, so they are. Uh, so, but the core of all of that technology, which faces customer is going to change from mechanical. Uh, today, we still have steering wheels, still have handlebars. Uh, maybe at some point they will vanish by by the time you reach my age. Uh, you will see vehicles may not have windshield. They're all created for humans, right? We need to see. We need wipers and we need headlamps. We need front and back. Computers don't need them. You look at a vehicle by the time in 15 years from now, you may not have windshields. You may not have a direction and you may not have forward reverse. Any direction is okay for like a train engine you would have seen, right? The engine doesn't have forward and rear. Uh, both sides, it can travel at the same speed with the same capability. Uh, because we need to see, we need to uh, see clearly, we need to see the obstacles, we need a light, we can't see in dark. The LIDARs can see in dark today. Most of the uh, iPhones latest, uh, some of you will have it. Uh, will ha It has an uh, LIDAR for autofocus today. 
so they do have lidars in vehicles which will see through the night and radars in the vehicles uh, so most of these technologies are going to end up in software and modeling and uh, uh, theoretical basis so job per se will change uh, all of us work from home for the last two years uh, we'll continue to work most of you by the time you reach your engineering specializations you will work from multiple locations on a project in a remote location uh, on part of the project which is mostly on modeling theory ai uh, deep learning uh, methods of that project and the conventional method of designing uh, is going to split into theoretical forms of design automatically designing itself we had a project to design a motor uh, by the computer so you give the torque and uh, power envelope like a theoretical designer who designs a motor we also tell the computer what is the sizing what is the armature what is the kind of uh, magnets we want to use uh, amount of magnets we are interested in using to save the money and the computer goes ahead and designs and then optimizes the design with a million 3 million iterations in about 6 uh, 7 days and we get a design of a motor directly from computer right you would have seen the computer generated images of people like that you can see a computer generating uh, a motor out of nowhere we just gave the power and torque and the computer came out and we told them how much magnet to use because magnets are expensive and imported uh, the computers can design now we need engineers who can do that and that engineer doesn't have a designation as electrical mechanical uh, or civil who knows ai who knows deep learning who knows machine learning who knows how to give a problem who knows how to correct these problems uh, to make them learn we need one time a motor designing telling you what rules are required for motor design and then you do design the computer designs it right now you have uh, music uh, creation happening in computers you would have seen google has a nice uh, ai tool uh, where it can compose because we all know these seven notes which are at a different frequency levels which our ear senses to be good music and we all say there's a hit song this song we like tend most of the people tend to like a particular music uh, for a reason because our brain the way we process this uh, Uh, musical notations in our brain after we hear them uh, into a very similar thing which we makes us like them most most of us so there's an algorithm which is trying to create it so you give a combination of notes you give a combination of uh, scale of the music and then the computer can generate uh, your notations and play it for you uh, your liking and so it, it this is the way world is moving so a lot of technologies which require people to sit and design today suspension design in a company like ours is almost automated you design the load you design the uh, size of the tire but the suspension design is almost automated which is mostly true today in many of the companies today it is done by a computer in the office tomorrow it will be done in the cloud you can most of the auto companies will have a vehicle design platforms ready in the cloud you just give the requirements they can put together quickly the suspension layout steering geometries and the braking systems every one of them uh, so they they can assemble them uh, in the cloud except the style surfaces features what is not possible till today is to see the user interaction the drivers the passengers in a vehicle interacting with the vehicle uh, you would have seen the ola vehicle talking back uh, alexa in your homes or google talking to you in your homes in your uh, in your hostel rooms uh, that's where the technology is the vehicles communicating with you understanding your thought process understanding your needs understanding your travel pattern understanding your shopping patterns today many of the it companies uh, social media companies track you uh, understand all your features most of the shopping uh, labels when you look at through your phone uh, sees the camera when you look at a dress they know who you are what age you are the algorithms run at the background to see to show the next dress uh, based on the who you are and what will suit you from the computer models so this is the way the vehicle softwares will move in uh, the vehicle will know a person of an younger uh, uh, age looking to buy a vehicle in the web most of the vehicle purchases will happen in the web uh, the ola uh, and tesla many of the places the modern age vehicles in the next 5 7 years to people like you when you are capable of buying your own car first car in next 5 6 years uh, will be web configured you go to the web and which already knows based on your social media profile who you are and what is your interests are what is your color preferences are what kind of designs you like what kind of uh, materials uh, dress materials and other things you bought 
and the flowers you like and your taste there are enough information about every one of us in the social media to pick uh, our taste and interest the computers can configure certain things for you and offer you as a first cut vehicle you can reconfigure them uh, pick features depending on the money that you are willing to pay and the whole thing goes into cloud to build a software for your vehicle on an automatic way we are not no longer going to have companies uh, sitting and coding them um, module by module and integration and test what indian it industry is all about uh, may not be there in the next uh, set of 10 years uh, we may have cloud configuring we may need people to write those codes uh, to do this auto configured softwares and we may need people to design hardwares to do this software to sit in and uh, so you may need people to design the first ever uh, motor configuration for a particular family of vehicles first ever power electronics topology first ever dc dc converter topology first ever charger topology but if you do three charger three power converters three dc dc converters you see most of them look like same i have done uh, in my team we have done about four or five chargers uh, three dc dc converters about five to six motor controllers and about four to five motors most of them if you finish your design of a long process of one one and a half years you look at them they look very very similar the topology is not big difference you look at a prius motor to i3 motor to uh, tesla's latest uh, motor uh, to nissan leaf motor you take a cut section see the number of holes the way the magnets are kept and these the reluctance paths are they are the same not much different there are very fine differences there are very very fine ip and patents blocking them uh, but it is you can say 80% same there is a rotor there is a two bearings there is some uh, magnets there is some lamination copper and some cooling then they work uh, they are identical some develop 3 kilowatt uh, so in a two wheeler some develop 8 kilowatt in a ola scooter something will develop uh, 20 kilowatt in a small uh, uh, vehicle and something may develop 100 kilowatt and 300 kilowatt uh, the way it goes i worked in a motor in ge which is uh, 6000 uh, 4000 kilowatt <coughs> it's the same motor you look at a 6000 motor cross section scale it down Uh, to a smaller size keep it next to a, a motor from a, a car or a, a bus or a truck they look the same uh, either, either even though the power is different the current flow is different voltages are different but the topology more or less looks the same so the way i want to put it up for all of you is there is huge amount of opportunity uh, for engineers but the conventional engineers of designing shaft Uh, bearings casings and uh, power components for vehicles such mention linkages and all that is history uh, we may not require those capabilities any longer in the industry not only in industries like us and most of the industries which mass produce things but we need people who can create solutions which can uh, go across models which can uh, create a value for customers in the cloud in the vehicle through software automated design solutions so that is the skills you need to acquire otherwise you get relegated to very lower end roles in industry we will have motors but we may have very novel cooling solutions we will have power trains we may have a very novel cooling of those semiconductor devices so i can pump more current i may have power electronics but i may have a very novel insulating capability where i may have a very tight packaging of mosfets or igbts uh, we may have sensors which are very novel sensing current and voltages and uh, magnetic flux and uh, way the poles are arranged in a rotating machine we may have software algorithm which can predict rather than measure and control a motor so that motors can spin all the way to 18000 20000 rpm right so now the ability to model any physical phenomena is welcome you see a, a small uh, uh, gadget that you use uh, can you mathematically model it you see a cycle free wheel and a chain drive in your cycle which you use in campus can you model it can you look at a suspension damper in a vehicle can you model it mathematically in your matlab in your python whatever languages you know how to or in your c code i am not pushing you to do a particular way but you should be able to do it you all of you have headphones and speakers as youngsters can you model the speaker in your headphone you uh, so many broken headphones we have uh, so many microphones we have handled in our headsets uh, so many old cell phones we have 
there's a nice vibration generator uh, it's a beautiful mechanical engineering i don't know how many of you are aware that the vibration is generated by an eccentric weight or a reciprocating weight in these so please look at them uh, how you will be able to uh, model them mathematically and design them in the cloud uh, suppose i have a vibration generator for my cell phone can i have a vibration that uh, generator on my handlebar or a steering wheel so what is the force required to generate can you use the model what you did for your cell phone vibration mode activator uh, to create a vibration mode for my brake pedal or for my uh, steering wheel if i'm running in an autonomous mode my seat can it vibrate to alert saying that i can the vehicle can't hold the autonomous mode because it sees so many obstacles it can't find a way out through a traffic jam in a bombay or whichever city you live in uh, it wants hand over control by the time you slept off how do you wake you up maybe a vibration mode in your seat right so now how do you do that uh, design without modeling without scaling up without doing detailing now this is where the world is going so i would like to challenge each one of you uh, to look at the designs which are novel designs which are automated uh, designs which are done in the cloud and designs which are integrated with the software anything you design uh, you are a vibration damper designer can i change the damper characteristics by a cloud based solution i am a person who want to design a bms measuring voltages currents going in and out of battery temperatures i want to manage the individual cell in a battery pack so that they have optimum life and optimum cycles uh, can you uh, create a solution in the cloud a model of the cell which i can model it for a different operating temperatures in india in a summer the battery can operate with a different charge rate in a winter it can operate differently because the resistance in the battery changes so how do i do it uh, with whatever you have access uh, the previous speaker mentioned about your cell phone battery to car battery not much different except that we have ton of them connected peri- series parallel combinations but can you take a single lithium cell it's available in the amazon today you can buy a 18650 cell what we all use in our uh, two wheelers or a 21700 cell can you model it can you connect a small power and discharge charge uh, this is another area for a mechanical engineer how many of you are bold enough to touch a 48 volt wires uh, the previous speaker talked about hybrid right so can you take a 12 volt battery in your bike can you touch both the terminals with your hand i have done it with most of the mechanical engineers can't touch it because they feel that they are going to die because of uh, there is a voltage now something which prevents thing them to get the first step into this electric hybrid bandwagon software bandwagon for mechanical engineers uh, they limit themselves into the narrowed domain of uh, their education i feel that they need to come out uh, look at areas in the motor design 80% of the design is mechanical engineering in the battery pack design in uh, vehicles in my opinion other than the cell Uh, and a small bms component and its software 70 80% of the design is mechanical engineering the entire uh, structural part of the battery cooling part of the battery connecting cells uh, uh, in parallel series combination modularization part of the battery waterproofing part of the battery all are mechanical engineering right and same thing in power electronic box as you pump in more current more voltages the cooling of them the connector of them Uh, if you want to do fast charger the uh, plugs of the fast charger when you transfer i have seen a fast charger at 1000 volt and 1000 amperes and the cables are cooled with liquid how do you make a liquid cooled cable how do you make a connector which has um, milli ohms or micro ohms when you connect to copper 10 mm rods uh, continue to have it after 10000 cycle 20000 cycles of fast charging in a fast charging stations now they are all very fine mechanical engineering right and uh, very fine uh, engineering in a sense and but that is the engineering which will have value in future uh, not the conventional engineering so i require uh, all the mechanical engineers to take that as a challenge to look at software uh, look at uh, design supporting electrical engineering and designs uh, being done in the cloud modeling of any physical systems in a mathematical way and will validate those models i talked about a vibration generator in your cell phone can you model it can you generate uh, what frequency and how much of the force it can generate and uh, which makes you your uh, phone vibration uh, sensible by every one of us right so how do you do that and what is the way that electrical process is modeled what is the way the armature is modeled 
what is the way that eccentric weight is modeled and what is the way the mechanical coupling of that to a cell phone body is modeled right so this is this is where i require uh, the next generation of engineers to move in right otherwise putting together an electric vehicle today any of you can start a company make an electric two wheeler there are thousands of companies getting registered in india on a monthly basis they are straight forward solutions putting a vehicle is quite easy three of you can join start a company if you have some money get the parts from many multiple companies buy a motor buy a controller 48 volt buy a battery pack from one company dc dc converter from one company charger for some 500 watts make some simple frame take any of the frames which are running in the market design a vehicle put together some of you can style it want the shape of the vehicle to be in a particular way and then assemble a vehicle it should run there is nothing secret in that so one vehicle doable two vehicles doable five vehicles doable for your neighborhood doable what is difficult in automobile is how do you produce every day 4000 vehicles tvs produces 12000 vehicles a day and the same way every vehicle runs so every vehicle putting together again and again and again is a task which is not engineering buying material buying steel tubes buying tires buying every vehicle need to have them right we don't know how to survive without tires every vehicle need to have a nice plastic nice looking plastic covers every vehicle need to have uh, some switches every vehicle need to have a seat because human beings need to have a softer surface to sit for a longer time every vehicle require a frictional surface to stop the vehicle uh, when i want to apply a brake right they are all parts every vehicle requires a lamp every vehicle requires uh, uh, some uh, uh, parts to measure the speed measure the voltage measure the current now this vehicle parts need to be procured and assembled so building a vehicle is a two wheeler or a three wheeler one of its kind it's only nothing but a certain amount of money getting converted into products it's quite easy i welcome all of you to look at manufacturing as a career path to make your own products like what our prime minister repeatedly says younger minds to become entrepreneurs to produce anything whether it is an oxygen concentrator or a bike or a three wheeler or a e rickshaw uh, all of you are capable of producing them uh, but the challenge is that is not technology buying six parts and assembling with a nut and bolt calling it i have made an electric company is not going to take you further they will all get killed when the scale happens when big companies get in uh, when they invest in thousands of crores and create vehicles which are uh, software based which communicates with each other which talks to each of the vehicles you and your friend in your vehicle having a game played on the cluster uh, they are the challenges how do you create that each of your helmets have a noise cancelling headset integrated with the cooling system integrated to blow a cold air or a warm air depending on a summer or winter and have a lithium battery and is charging and filters the air now today's world of uh, masks uh, filters the air going through your helmet to a hepa filter with uh, uh, that level of capability how do you do that so this this is where we we have challenges in the industry uh, for the country to progress Uh, we need engineers not of the traditional engineers not of the engineers who knows how to calculate m12 bolts stark uh, m12 bolts fatigue life uh, so they are all required they are all known uh, today anybody can google get the answers for all of them tensile strength of material how do you do in a column how do you do a cantilever uh, well known you all you all will study you will pass they are not a problem most of the textbooks remain the same from my days hopefully but i challenge all of you to get a kit a microcontroller kit 8088051 most of you would have studied part of your course uh, get, open your old cell phones uh, see the fine engineering each of the connectors how they are laid out uh, open your cell phone see how the lcd has a backlit led which pushes the light through the lcds uh, see the fragile connectors see the plastics which are nicely sealed uh, waterproof Uh, most of them you would have seen right i uh, apple watch video you immerse under water the speaker is used as a pump to send the water out there is a switch and another great thing which i challenge mechanical engineers please get the cross section of the apple watch dial now uh, that has a ecg sensor so that has 23 parts integrated in a watch dial uh, watch knob what you should turn for changing the uh, commands there's an encoder uh, there is a waterproofing there is a ecg sensor Uh, there is a uh, button switch 
Uh, all are integrated, very finest form of engineering. You enlarge it uh, 50 times, 100 times, put it in your room, look at uh, mechanical engineering, what somebody can do, right? Now, that is where the mechanical engineers are going. I've seen copper wires. Every adjacent copper wire in a motor is cooled by a pipe carrying water. I've seen uh, wire shapes changing when you assemble the coil into from a circular wire to a different shape. As you wind the copper so that you get maximum copper inside the slot, so you get a maximum flux and maximum power in a motor. Now, that's where the technology is going. You would have seen the uh, cooling of Tesla uh, 1856 six, 650 cells, uh, 21700 cells cooled by a very flexible aluminum pipe, flat pipe. Now, how do you do that? And uh, how do you make the water flow through that? Uh, you see a Tesla power electronic box, which is opened up in uh, web. You can see the videos, how they create a turbulent flow. All of you learned laminar flow, turbulent flow, all the Reynolds number. But how do they use it to make the cooling of a power electronic or a MOSFET uh, or a IGBT uh, cool better? Now, how do you create turbulent flow? Why turbulent flow cools better? Why laminar flow is not effective? Why not? How do you create a turbulent flow for a battery pack in a two-wheeler or a four-wheeler? Now, they are the challenges. And when you create turbulent flow, you need a very high pumping force, right? All of you know there is enough losses, pressure drop. So you need a very high pumping force. How do you create low pumping force with the turbulent flow? Right. So this is this is where the mechanical engineering need to go. And, uh, and I encourage all of you to spend time uh, in uh, looking at these directions, uh, modeling, AI and uh, software based uh, devices and uh, not getting scared of any voltages and wires. Uh, please start slowly. Don't put your risk. Don't try to uh, open a 230 volt gadget without knowing what it means to you. They are live and it can harm you and uh, cause of serious damage and uh, risk to your life. I'm not advocating anything unsafe. Uh, please talk to your friends in electrical, electronics, get some simple kits to try out, uh, simple gadgets to try, remove the fear of wire is bad, wire is good, it's part of our life. Every gadget or what we have is connected up today, every charger, uh, today enough videos, you need not open a gadget. If you are scared of a battery pack, you will never have an access to a Tesla pack. Today, you can see the video of a Tesla pack getting dismantled. You can see a Tesla controller cooling system dismantled and explained. You can see a Tesla motor, how the water goes through the shaft, cools the rotor at rotating at 15,000 RPM, and the water, hot water comes out. How, how nicely somebody can design without the water leaking and uh, flooding the motor, right? So they are all the possibilities for you to learn, and uh, their entire industry will move. Hybrid is gone and EV is coming, and EV will remain for some time, then maybe fuel cell. I don't know the technology at this point, what is going to happen. Government wants hydrogen, government wants alcohol. There may be fuel cell opportunities in uh, uh, trucks, buses, long distance, um, but uh, as the battery and fast charging uh, is uh, coming to a mature level, uh, I think in the next five, 10 years, uh, lithium and electric vehicle will rule. Uh, because the way India is looked at, uh, we have enough solar and we have unlimited solar. We have put enough solar capability and we need the solar to be used, uh, solar based electricity to be used. So, government has two tracks uh, one to push it into vehicle batteries, mostly two wheelers and small vehicles, easy to change. And second is to use the uh, electricity to split uh, water in the sea to generate hydrogen, move the hydrogen to power the industries as a power source instead of coal move the hydrogen into fuel cell to make trucks and buses run. Uh, this is our run it in power generation uh, applications with hydrogen as a fuel. And uh, so this is a possible path government wants us to take. And uh, they are all opening up uh, technologies for each one of you uh, to do. And uh, get started with these technologies. Use your cell phone as a gadget. All of us have access to old cell phones, uh, less capable cell phones what we reject. And uh, please don't throw them, don't exchange them, study them and see whether you can write an algorithm in Android, whether you can write your own app in Android, whether you can read the camera data in your Android, uh, whether you can use the cell phone in your bike fit and take an image, identify a road sign, identify a speed breaker. They're all very nice codes, enough open codes are available for you to try. And uh, th there is nothing to get frightened. Everything first time is a problem. And every one of us in the industry had one first day in office. First day in college, right? Every one of you had that in any one of part of your life. So please learn these technologies and uh, don't remind your courses, your tiny project, 
uh, your certificate uh, declaring you're a mechanical engineer. That doesn't sell anywhere in the industry. And uh, you need to go out of that. Uh, the next, uh, this is uh, working from home, studying from home is a great opportunity. You can learn widely, uh, sleep less, and spend more time uh, browsing meaningful things and reading meaningful books. A lot of books are free to download today. And uh, please spend time. Uh, get your skills to the sharpest possible level. Set a path and you pursue a path. And whichever industry you go, whichever uh, line you take, uh, see whether your heart has a faster tick for the job. And uh, Don't pursue things which uh, your friend has pursued, your senior has pursued, your brother or sister has pursued, or your father, mother wants you to pursue. There is nothing is going to work for long term. Your heart should say, I like the job because I like working in this area. I like coding. I like designing. I like uh, looking at uh, some intelligence, uh, look at novel solutions. Whatever is the heart uh, guiding you, uh, please pursue that. Want to be a businessman? Feel that the current businesses are not up to mark. You want to have an ethical business. You want to have very creative business. You feel automobiles are looking dumb and dull with single colors. You want to have floral designs on the vehicle bodies. Every vehicle is uniquely designed by you in the web and it appears on the panels. They are all technologies, right? Please pursue whatever is uh, your dream and all the very best to you and whatever you pursue to do. And uh, hope uh, this was useful. So I have made it very unconventional because of you being very young, uh, telling you a power electronic topology, telling you a DC DC converter topology, and talking about designs, what we do in electrical. They all you will do wherever you go. It may not interest many of you. Uh, somebody brought all of you captive today. I don't know how many of you are there today. Uh, 78 of you. And uh, so uh, I feel that this is what uh, is going to be useful to you. Uh, so please ask as well. I exactly finished at uh, 46, uh, 1946. I have 15 minutes to get some questions and hopefully meaningful answers. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, now I would like the audience to bring forth any question that might have risen during the session, either in the chat box or you could just raise your hand and our team shall give you the option to unmute so that you can ask the question. Somebody, Neil. Hello. Yeah. Uh, he uh, hello, evening, sir. sir. Yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, a very good evening, sir. Sir, uh, so this is Sir uh, Ashutosh here, and I have a question. As you said that in the upcoming five years, India would be uh, going into the path of uh, fully hybrid electric vehicles so there would be some some reliability issues i think so can you sir please define those reliability issues so uh, uh, see in the hybrid uh, very complex will have more failure modes than a ic engine vehicle because you have two vehicles combined in one frame you have an electric vehicle and you have a full ICE vehicle with the gearbox and everything. Now, when you merge both of them with a very complex control system and uh, topology, mechanically very difficult coupling, electrically and software-wise very difficult coupling, you will have a huge failure. So most likely industry will skip. That's why I said hybrid may not happen, electric vehicle. But if you look at electric vehicle, the only failure mode is uh, bad uh, quality connectors, bad quality electrical engineering, bad quality software. Uh, most of these vehicles are cloud connected. Uh, if you look at TVS iCube, what we sell, uh, every person's, every drive is known to us. Uh, we don't connect to the name. We don't know the name of the person as a privacy issue. We know the vehicle, the chassis number, where it went, where all it went, how it was charged, when it was charged, how many times it was charged, what are the top speed, what are the average speed, when it was stopped, what are the current run, what are the battery voltage, everything is known. Uh, typically, you can trace them. So we have algorithms which analyze these data. And we know problem before happening. Somebody says, I charged yesterday. It showed 100%, but it only traveled this much. But if you look at the data, he was traveling all the way at 80 kilometers most of the time. And 80 kilometers, if you drive most of the time, so you will have uh, your range being drastically come down because your energy per kilometer is very high. 
so from a reliability point of view there is nothing to fail you don't have wall drain you don't have crankshaft you don't have oil pump you don't have cooling system you don't have gearbox you don't have a clutch you don't have a clutch activator you don't have cables all these parts go missing from a electric vehicle the only part which is supposed to fail is tires and brake shoes and uh, nothing else fails typically they come with led lights which have a longer life all of us in our home seen it compared to filament light led lights la- last longer uh, so the failure mode is only brake shoes and brake shoe wear out brake shoe related activations and stuff and uh, the uh, tires which will get worn out and uh, rest of the parts like suspension typically in two wheeler we don't see issues in a normal drive in a three wheeler four wheeler uh, taxi markets we will have suspension failures and some linkage related rubber bushes uh, i don't see a reliability issue on an electric power train uh, the power train per se motor sa- controller uh, dc dc charge uh, charger dc dc converter is validated and put in production uh, typically we don't expect them to fail for the life of the vehicle uh, the chassis may fail but many of these parts may not fail uh, thank you very much sir yes please um we have the next question from uh... Vishesh, you uh, could unmute yourself and ask the question. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yes, please. Uh, sir, in your speech, you were saying that how conventional designers have become irrelevant to the industry since everything, has, everything is automated now. Sir, my question is whether the CA engineers are relevant to the industry or is the entire process of CAE is automated as well? Yeah, so I never said that today we are not required. Today we are all having jobs and all of us are conventional engineers. Uh, so today I said when you guys reach to the level, uh, five years down the line, seven years down the line, you will not have uh, these conventional designers. So if you look at CAE, CAE is one of the first one they are going to lose the jobs. What is CAE? So you have a tool called ANSYS or a COMSOL or a Fluent. You name the tool. For a fluid mechanic, there is a tool. for uh, ma- mechanical analysis stress analysis there's a tool for a thermal analysis there is a tool right for that there's a design and uh, you suppose you have a design which is automated you have a boundaries you know the connecting point you need to design a linkage the software designs a linkage right you have already put the constraints for them so the a algorithm pushes the design software to design a linkage now the design has to be analyzed for mechanical capability how much it will bend how much it will uh, Uh, when it will fail how many cycles of load it can take now they don't need a designer it has to be meshed it has to be analyzed that's the easiest part most of the first level of automation will happen in cae uh, because the cae is a very uh, greatly admired team in all the auto companies uh, when i joined right uh, about 25 years back or 30 years back uh, they were the key blue eyed boys of the mechanical engineering industry highly paid they are more typically pg and phds Uh, they have fancy tools and fancy workstations uh, so no longer uh, this is a dumb tool today which uh, computers will automatically run you write a script and it runs and gives you solution you need people who can interpret if you say there is a stress concentration uh, you may need to alter the design right if you see a turbulent flow i said cooling for a power electronic box now if you see a particular corner of a flow stream uh, where i have put a mosfet for a particular uh, Uh, operation which is generating heat but uh, not having enough water flow to remove the heat statically it is getting water is getting locally heated now i need an experienced guy to say uh, what way the solver should uh, look at it what way the design tool has to redo the design right you may add additional uh, curved surfaces to make the water additionally flow through that area take additional bend uh, maybe a pressure loss so i feel those experiences are required till it go get captured in the computer system uh we call it flat spots or uh, black spots in the design otherwise we don't need for conventional meshing conventional solving of stress thermal uh, flow flow fields uh, we may not require uh, great uh, we they won't be, i'm not saying that teams won't exist they won't be a greatly admired highly paid teams uh, like uh, 10 years back uh, so their jobs will get automated uh, so they will uh, won't be a big group isolated highly paid specialized uh, teams uh, this is answer and that is not tomorrow yes. not today uh, it is some more time is there by the time you guys mature into that positions uh, the warning whenever i say warning please take it 
uh, in a correct spirit. I'm not saying you don't have a job. I'm only saying when you get in, when you chart as an engineer, grow in a CAE team, uh, work hard and get promotions, uh, want to become a group leader, by the time the job will get automated. Now, the first job which goes when uh, automation happens, the senior guy jobs are gone. Uh, because we don't need so many senior people uh, to manage people because we, there won't be people to do, do this job. And people go, senior people have a very high risk of losing jobs. Uh, that is where you should not lose job because your family, your middle of your career, 40 years, your children go to colleges, schools, and you have taken a car, a house, EMI. Uh, losing a job at uh, 20 is not a problem. Losing a job at 35 is a serious problem. Uh, so you should select careers which has a long way to cross your uh, middle part of the life in a comfortable zone with your experiences, which are valuable at that point of time. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for your answer. Sir, j there's just one follow-up question that I have. May I ask? Yes, please. Uh, sir, uh, then what skills should we focus? Like as a conventional engineer, uh, what what are the skills should we focus? Because uh, to me, like uh, CA was a what should I say? It's something new to our curriculum, and I was so excited. And now, since you said that, it's going to lose its charm in the coming years. Uh, so, as a mechanical engineer, what are the skills should no, we exactly I mean, focus on? Please, I'm not asking you to become a CA. I'm saying, can you make a AI engineer making use of three CA tools? Can you write oh. a AI code where I can take a part which I can analyze mechanically, thermally, and flow wise? and tell that this part will work automatically. Can you use three tools in your CAE lab? Whatever fluid flow tool, whatever thermal tool, whatever stress tool, can you give a uh, script externally in the cloud which will automatically take your design, uh, submit it to each one of them, do iterative analysis of all the boundary conditions, and then give all the failure modes to the cloud tool for the cloud-based tool to redesign. In this case, there is no cloud-based uh, design tool. You are the designer. So you operate, yes, design, make the CA tools automated. Uh, that is where I felt that you can add value. So that means knowledge of CA tool is required. Knowledge of uh, CA tool usage is required. Uh, interpretation of result is required. Because you are going to make a super tool to use these tools. Now you're making CA tool uh, engineer's job subservient to your cloud tool. That's what I said. So you need to learn it. Uh, don't yes, skip sir. any learning. You are not a basic mechanical engineer. You can never do anyway in the cloud. Never do modeling anyway. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for your answer. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, we have the next question from Panoma Gridhar Kumar. Hello, you can sir. just unmute yourself. Yeah. Uh, hello, sir. We we mainly concerned about electrical vehicles. Uh, like it has no no emissions. Uh, at 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 that point. But what we actually do is uh, we produce energy at the end. Um, basically, what it uh it has emissions. Like uh, what you suggest about the alternative energy solutions? Yeah, I've like, I'm, I'm not got the question. What is the question in that? Uh, uh, what our concern with uh, ice vehicle is, is its emissions, emissions, CO2 emissions. And uh, we prefer electrical vehicle uh, because it, it doesn't have emissions. But uh, what I actually would is uh, we produce energy from, uh, from somewhere uh, from a power plant. And we store it in a, in a battery and we will use it then. Uh, but okay. uh, so, yeah, I got it. So, so, you missed half my last part of the speech. I told India going to electric because we have abundant sun. We are not producing energy. Sun is producing energy for us happily in a faraway place, not created by us. We only put a panel at this point imported from China, but uh, future hopefully will be in India. Uh, so, put a panel in the desert. And uh, you get energy which is plenty, clean, green, with no carbon but, whatsoever. Hello, sir. Um, but the solar is unreliable. Like, we'll get power when it is when the sun is there. Uh, yeah. What do we do it? So, you, 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 you charge your vehicle battery when the sun is there, right? Why are you... So, two-wheelers, uh, when we use, if you look at the two-wheeler data I have, all our two-wheelers are used between nine, morning 7 o'clock to morning 10 o'clock. Most of the electric tool is what we have sold. And most of these vehicles are used between 3 and uh, 7 o'clock in the evening. So what they do between 11 and 3, they are happily sitting in some parking lot with uh, each one of them having 3 kilowatt hour battery pack. Assume they have 1 million battery uh, operated TVS vehicles. 
suppose i tie up with the power company to allow them to charge during day uh, day time from a solar energy where the sun is peaking right most of the personalized vehicle any anything called personal vehicle not a commercial vehicle uh, like trucks and buses and auto rickshaws they need very differently i'll come back to that separately the personal vehicles are never used during the peak of the day it is used mostly in the night in the mornings and the evening like a student go to college then come back home or go to a tuition come back home like i drive in the morning i start from my home at 7 o'clock to drive i reach my office at 8 o'clock one hour drive my car stays in my parking lot i look at the car at 6 o'clock so what the car is doing between 8 to 6 o'clock is nothing but a nicely shaded offices parking lot if they give me a power plug from a solar we have all our factory buildings are solar powered uh, from the solar i get a line with a dc dc converter converts it to my vehicle whatever is the dc voltage of my vehicle has assuming i have an electric now it charges at 300 volt dc to my vehicle now it's clean green from my factory floor i got electric energy i have nothing else so my when i dr- drive home i go with the solar charged vehicle and uh, i can actually power my home if i have a, a reversible converter at my home when i park my car i can use the 100 ke- kilowatt hour of battery pack in my car to power my home for the whole night and i can charge the battery pack at the home if i don't have a individual home with a solar panel on top so that's how the future is looked at so you have, you acquire this energy government of india says 260 gigawatt hour of energy solar by 2025 uh, so we will have green energy uh, we will use the green energy to store in lithium batteries and then use them to drive vehicles so that's the, that's the thought process and the petrol what we buy we are paying 88 billion or 90 billion dollars every year import bill only for petrol we don't want to waste that money and also we produce fast top 10 cities of polluting cities are in india uh, we want the cities to be clean for you guys for the next generation so there are all multiple angles so i uh, feel that government's path is clear and at least uh, uh, there is no problem of carbon coming in between yes sir thank you we have the uh, last question from uh, neel kamal uh, neel you can just unmute yourself and ask the question good morning sir sir yes my... please so as you told uh, uh, electric vehicles have great future so how long do you think that uh, for electric uh, electric vehicles or hybrid vehicles it would be a general things uh, to come in indian market Uh, and to be afford affordable by the common people so this is a scale right so somebody has to invest now people started investing and uh, every company if you look at the next 2 years 3 years capital investment of tvs bajaj hero uh, honda maruti uh, tatas mahindras any company you name it next 5 years if you look at i can talk about volkswagen volkswagen is investing close to 300 billion dollars uh worth of money in electrification of their products so every company will invest so tvs is investing for the next 2 years all the product related investments will go into electrification so 3 years from now we can start producing high volume electric vehicles right now ola is investing 2000 crores in uh, very close to our factory in uh, uh, near bangalore so that they are going to have a factory which is investment of 2000 crores similar thing will happen with bajaj similar thing will happen with hero similar thing will happen with multiple people when everybody puts this money it will take 3 years then you will see them affordable today if you look at our tvs uh, jupiter or honda activa uh, ola vehicle is cheaper than them already so if you want to buy ola versus activa you will find ola is cheaper so you will buy ola because you don't need petrol charges you need not ask money from your parents for petrol or send spend your pocket money on petrol which is very expensive today a uh, liter of petrol is 100 rupees plus uh, you would rather use your office um, uh, parking which is uh, solar electricity is still cheaper one uh, scooter for a 50 km drive which most of you will do on a regular basis including your uh, evening outs and friends and everything so that we may not uh, take more than one unit of electricity which is from a solar it is 4 rupees from a coal bad uh, energy which is maybe 12 rupees uh, so 4 rupees for one day's usage most of you can afford cheaper than your coffee what you take uh, so this this is the logic so we we will have uh, 
these vehicles being affordable uh, running cost is affordable today initial cost is quite high and uh, once everybody invests and start producing cost will come down india will produce its lithium battery there is a two three companies are given proposal uh, in about 3 years we will have lithium uh, cell plants in india uh, so it's our own battery cells our own battery packs our own motors most of them our own power electronics maybe chips and power mosfets will be imported and our own software we are good in writing software and uh, steel is anyway plenty in india we may import only oil for plastics uh, rest of them may not be uh, used uh, so th- this is the logic we may import lithium we may import rare earth magnets we may import in import semiconductor and microprocessor and controllers uh, rest of them will be india so this this is this is the ta- direction we are traveling okay. you have to wait for 3 years to be affordable uh, today yes it is affordable but really uh, competitively affordable four wheeler maybe at uh, uh, 5 lakh 7 lakh electric cars uh, you need to wait for some more time uh, so maybe 3 years okay, there is no more question i guess um so it was a wonderful interactive session indeed thank you sir for answering all the questions with utter patience and for giving us our valuable time we look forward to hosting you in our upcoming events as well thank you sir thank you everyone have a wonderful day end of the day and uh, all the very best to you in whatever career path you take and uh, be sincere to yourself your heart and your wishes and your dreams uh, don't track anybody else uh, anybody your friend your neighbor your senior brother sister colleague parents Uh, they have their own career paths they had and they have and please have your dreams and pursue them so that uh, uh, you need not retrace your paths all the very best to you in whatever you pursue thank you very much bye good night now i would like to request aniket to continue with the further question i'm sure the valuable inputs given by our speakers must have triggered an interest in the young minds present here to explore this field I would like to once again thank all our speakers for giving us the valuable time despite their busy set- schedule. It was a pleasure to have you sir and we hope to conduct more such great sessions in the future. Finally, I would like to inform the audience that your particip- participation certificates will be sent to your registered email IDs within a span of 2 weeks. I would request the audience here to check your registered email IDs regularly. for the certificate further if anyone has any issues with the certificate you could just reply back to the same email addressing your issue or you could directly message any of the numbers displayed on the poster you can find the numbers in the chat box as well so this concludes the webinar thank you all for attending it we hope you have learned and enjoyed this presentations given by the eminent speakers till then follow our social media handles to stay updated about all our events thank you thank you everyone i guess it's time to take your leave